Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here on the Bow River in Alberta, Canada. We are doing some ammonite hunting. Yes, illegal fossil hunting in Alberta. So wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. I am here with Chris from Silver Cove today. He has brought me out to one of his favorite amylite hunting zones on the Bow River. And we're walking the beaches right now, seeing what we can find. We're not even to where we want to go yet. We just stumbled upon a very large ammonite. And I'll explain what ammonites versus amylite is in a second. A very large one that we're opening up. And he is saying that it is, yeah, <laughs> I think it is freaking amazing. But he says we're gonna find a lot better than that today. Absolutely. That color is just crazy. One of the main indicators for us is that we find a white line or a part of a white line, and that tells us there's an ammonite. I see a bit of a line there, yeah. On the island when we're looking for fossils, the, the big round balls like this are a great indicator. Yeah. Now I know what you've showed me so far is mostly fractured up stuff. Yes. But you're liking the looks of this one. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna get it out of the soft clay. I'm not hammering it into the bank. Look at that, that quick. This is part of a cuttlefish. Oh, okay. Or, no, it's actually a lobster, sorry. That's part of a lobster claw. We found a lobster. Yeah, there's a claw. There's I like his, lobsters. That's his pincher. <laughs> yum, yum. You said we were get, you're gonna find lunch here. I didn't think we'd be eating lobster for lunch. Yeah, there's there's one of his uh, little pinchers. Our first lobster of the day. <laughs> Not that it really looks like a lobster, but you it, can tell that that's pincher. a claw. Yeah. I got purple. Woohoo, purple is good. Is purple good? Purple's good. Purple's purple is good. good. Chris is very excited about what he's found up there. I guess purple is a important color, a sought after color. And he's found a, an ammonite up there that's broken apart that's showing some real nice purple color. You gotta see these when they're wet. Alrighty. Colors. That's a better color. Beauty colors. We got purples and greens. You see how thick oh, it is? Oh yes. That's cuttable. That is cuttable. That, that's a gemstone right there. Yep. This will cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'll get eight stones, nine, maybe nine stones out of it. And each stone anywhere from 40 to 150 bucks a piece. So let's say a hundred bucks, nine stones. There's a $900 rock. $900 rock, yeah. Wow. That there is Amylite, the provincial gemstone of Alberta. This is the $900 rock. And here's Chris's gooder. Beautiful colors. Reds, greens, purples, silvers, blues, everything you can imagine. Apparently the tri-color, the three different colors is the most sought after here. The rarest color is the purples and blues. And the reason why is that when it forms, it's usually on the exterior part of the shell. So when it's exposed to mother nature, it's the first color to disappear. So as I said, we're in Alberta, we're on the Bow River, and this rock behind me is the Bear's Paw Shale. It is what is known to host all these fossils. These fossils of this fish-like creature called an ammonite. And there's also a baculite. They're kind of like squiddish type things that lived 65 to 75 million years ago. And they fossilized in these shales. And these shales are very, very unique and specific in that when they fossilized these fish, they created a play of colors on the shell. The shell versus the chemicals that were in the, the soil, the shale, created this crazy play of colors that's almost like an opal color, and we call that amylite. And that brings me to a good chance for today's geology lesson of the day. Ammonites and baculites, they're fossils. Well, ammonites are the fossil. Amylite is the gemstone that is created from that fossil, or created from when that fossil weathers and oxidizes and forms just right to get those crazy colors. An amylite gemstone is worth a lot because amylite, the gemstone, is so beautiful and very expensive. That's today's geology lesson of the day. Now Chris is saying that this concretion here is looking really good. He can see an edge of something and that is probably the ammonite squashed down, flattened right down into just one layer. Let's see what, oh, it's already very loose. And there it is. I see lots of red, no purples. My first good find of the day. I may have to keep that piece just because it's my first find of really nice amylite. But Chris has found this concretion, and this concretion he knows has something because you can see it poking out. 
he's coming to split it open and see if we can find one of those perfect spirals of an ammonite. Whoop, there it is. Nice color I'm seeing already. That's a biggie. And Chris has a lot of experience doing this. So he knows what he's doing when he's hammering on this rock right now. Chris and his family have mi been mining ammonites and amylite for how long, Chris? <laughs> Since I've been old enough to walk. <laughs> okay, so about a hundred years, <laughs> what are you saying? Nice. Your shovel was almost doing it. You could see it separate. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> Full on spiral. Oh, there he is. Beautiful oh. red. Yeah, just missing a tiny little piece. That's a great little ammonite. Look at that guy. Little. Look at the boot. That great little guy. ammonite. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Color. I have no idea if the camera's picking up how bright red that is. It's a nice red, yeah, it's a red blazer. Conservatively, if I was to sell him locally, I'd probably ask around 10, 12,000 for him. <laughs> but in Tucson, probably 18, 19,000. So, illegal ammonite hunting on the Bow River. Is what we're doing here 100% illegal? No. It's not illegal because... I have an ammonite shell agreement with the Alberta government. Okay, Chris has the equivalent of what we'd have in BC as a claim yep. with a permit from the government yep. allowing him to hunt along this stretch. Yes. Now, is ammonite hunting in Alberta illegal? Yes, unless yes. you have an ammonite shell agreement with the Alberta government or you're rock hunting on private mineral held title land. Okay, so in general, despite what a lot of rock hounders will say, ammonite hunting in Alberta is 100% illegal unless you have those documents from the government saying you're allowed to do it. That's right. You can't just stop and pick the stuff up. And we are on Chris's claim or shell agreement, yep. and we are 100% legal to do this here, this illegal activity. That's right. This is a national treasure. That's what they consider them in the eyes of the Canadian government. The Canadian government views, views this as a national treasure. It's actually not even allowed to leave Canada without special permits, correct? If, if the value is over $5,000, you need a removable cultural export permit. And that is required whether it comes off the native reservation or it comes off my claim. You need that documentation to get it out. So if you buy a fossil down in Tucson, make sure you get the documentation with it. Very important. Right. So in order for us to uh, sell this, because it would sell for far more than $5,000, yep. if it was going outside the country, we'd have to go get the government government's approval mm -hmm. to send it outside the country because this right here mm -hmm. is considered a national treasure. Another one? Septarian. It's basically a mud ball that formed when something organic, uh, most of the time something organic died and the pH level in the water changed around that rotting item, whether it's a clamshell or a lobster or whatever it was, and it caused mud to cling to that dead creature. And over the course of millions of years, it turned into stone and these fracture seams are made of calcite or aragonite. Okay, we both have fancy pieces that we like the looks of. Wash off the mud. And you can just find this stuff all day long down here. It all depends on the rains. Like it's a really dry year, but uh, I didn't make it out last year, or a certain part of the year last year. So there's quite a bit left over from last year. That's why we're finding some with a lot of white. It's because they've weathered. Exactly. So we, we see the surface of an ammonite here that is baked. Yeah doesn't look good, but when you look at the mud ball it's in, you can see that the amylite only go, covers that much of the area and all this is mud. So the mud may have protected the backside of this and we might get some good gemstone yep. out of yep. the backside. Absolutely. Okay, so this, is, this doesn't look like much, right? Yep. I can tell you that that is non-weather exposed amylite and that'll have nice color and that'll cut some stones. So underneath the white we see now, we'd sand the white away and yep. you'd get great color. Yeah, that'll that'll produce one, two, probably three good stones. That little piece is probably worth about $200. So what happens is, is you see the shell stops here yeah. and it stops here, so there is no gem here. So what happened was, is when this guy died, whether a predator ate him or part of the fossil, never actually preserved. So this technically, when it was in its hole, was not a complete ammonite. Right. So is this rib look here the interior of the ammonite? It is, yeah. This is actually uh, the, one of the internal chambers you're looking at, one of the walls of the internal chambers. Uh, what we what, what th these are, they're actually full. The whole ammonite is full of them. And it actually helps them control their buoyancy in the water when they were alive. I'm not really 
to be a fossil guy, I'm a rock and gem guy, but this kind of stuff goes across the two uh, realms. We use the term gemstone loosely sometimes. There's two different types of gemstones, two different categories. There's the precious gems and the semi-precious gems. A lot of the lapidary rock that I hunt are semi-precious gems, but diamonds, sapphires, rubies, amylite. amylite. Opal, those are the precious gemstones. I see a chunk of one here. Woo! Nice. nice colors on the back side of that chunk. But still that white weathered out look starting. Really nice line of uh, of red going through it there and green. So we got a couple concretions here. There's three of them. This one looks like it might have something going through there. It's hard to say because it's quite weathered. Nope, nothing in that one. Well, I see this one from like 20 feet away. So let's go have a look and see what it is. I see the shine of the amolite. Definitely see red there, green over here. Oh, big, big flash of red. Oh, look at the ribs, the internal ribs and the color on the back. That's a nice little piece. Let's see if we can find the rest of this. Uh, it would have been a huge one. And I'm seeing fractures of other pieces close by. So we might be able to get more of this material right here. Look at the color. It's blazing red, that's for sure. So Chris sees one still in the bank. He can tell from the shape of it up there that it's most likely an ammonite. So he's gonna try to knock that down. We're gonna see if we can get another good one today. I see it moving. There she comes. It's split in half, so it's coming down two pieces. Let's make that 10 pieces. And I see color. Wow. Here's a chunk of the ammonite itself right there. Very cool. It's kind of like a dragon scale. What do you call the scaly stuff? Dragon skin. Dragon skin. This pattern right here, where's the little tiny pieces, that's your dragon skin. There's obviously not a full fossil here because it came apart in so many pieces, but in gemstone material, what would the value be? Retail, I'd probably put her around Four to five thousand dollars. Now, Chris, we have all the pieces of this. You could put this back together and sell it as a twenty thousand dollar fossil, or you could cut it down into a whole bunch of small gemstones and sell all the gemstones individually. Yes. But finding a buyer for a twenty thousand dollars fossil is tough. It is, and not only that, Dan, we got to hike it out of the coulee. It would take me all day to hike that out, and then I'm looking at about twenty-five to thirty hours worth of prep work to finish it. Well, I managed to find the matching set here of two of the pieces that came down the hill. They come apart perfectly. You can see both sides. Oh, yep. Yeah. Great color on both sides. I think that's probably the tabletop piece I will bring home for me. So Chris, you and your family have run a business of Amalite hunting and creating and jewelry and all the stuff for many years. Yes. What's the most expensive piece you or your family have prepped and sold? For me? You see that big ammonite up there? Yeah, I see a few of them up on that hill. Okay, the big, big, big one, the one we have yet to go excavate, right up there. <laughs> right where about that one is, uh, about five, six years ago, I found an ammonite right up there, pulled it out, we took the cap off perfectly, all the colors of the rainbow, thick jam, double A material, customer bought it out of Edmonton for $25,000 after I got release paperwork on it. I split it with my dad, because it was his customer. Yeah. I took my family on a nice holiday, and, uh, back out here the two weeks later. <laughs> so 25 is your biggest? That's my biggest, yeah. Awesome, $25,000. Let's find one. It's kind of funny, that last rock we just tumbled down has enough material that both of us could fill our packs and still not take it all, and yet we continue looking. And that stuff in that one was like the best material around. Okay, this might be a concretion here. It might have something in it. Let's see if we can split it and find out. Oh, quick split. It was a something. Something died in the ocean and left a something behind. Not what we're looking for. We're not looking for something. Although that was a really neat something. And Chris is on an expedition up the hill to see if he can knock down a couple of those ammonites up there because he says they look good. I'll see if I can find the ones that have already fallen. Here's one. Absolute no doubt that is one right there. Perfect shape. It's that sort of flying saucer disc shape. Definitely one. I'll wait for Chris to come down before we knock that one open because he might have some pointers for me to try to break it open nicely. There's a big one. Let's get some water on and see what it looks like. And this one, once I got it wet, just amazing. 
Amazing colors. And Chris just knocked down that one for me. So I see the line. There's a line right here. Inside that will be the ammonite. It is collapsed, it's squashed, it's pancaked. Uh, but let's see what comes comes out as. There it is. Whoa. Whoa. Purple, like huge purple. The color is crazy. And he's got another one coming. He just told me to watch out, so I better at least stand up in case I have to dodge. It's a gutter! You can see it popping out the side. Yeah, this is a perfect shape. That little lip is your boot. Okay, your boot. So, yeah, so that's where he lived. A little bit of booty? Yeah, and then up here is the crushed out part and never filled in with mud. So this will be a wall folder, it will be flat. And this should be fat down here. She may have been big when she was whole. Yeah, so she's not quite all there. She would have been like, like more like this. Yeah. So there's a few more pieces up there, but hey, cut some stones out of it. Come check out what I found. Come check out what oh, I found. Oh, nice. It's a complete. Absolute complete. Lots of purple in it. What's the color look like when it's wet? I don't know, I haven't, I haven't wetted it. Let's wet it, let's wet it. <laughs> look at the deep burgundy, or purples, I burgundy, yeah. Purples. Yeah. Violet. I love the transition into the reds and yellows and greens in the center. Yeah. It's beautiful. Look at that. Gorgeous. That is amazing. So when you get your your mixture of purples, blues, greens, yellows, like this combo, yep. we call that flower garden. Anyhow, I saw a little uh, nodule over here. Cool. It's already got some fractures in it, but uh, that, that's got to be one, eh? Oh, Just the, the yeah, shape of it hey. has, has to be. Darn, darn. Yeah, that's awesome. Just tap along the ridge. Yeah, light like tap along the ridge. Just make sure you're not knocking the ammonite itself when you do that. So. Oh, yeah. I see. I see a crack already yeah, right just there. Give her a light, light tap, and she should. She should just split. Nice and steady. Do you hear that? Do you hear the tone changed? It means the ammonite gem is separating from the rock inside. There you go. Uh, there it is. Okay. Let, me, let me spin it. We'll do it from the other side. Maybe you'll get lucky and you can get it out. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, Dan. Chris says this should be the one I take. He's really excited about this one. It's heavy. My poor back. I got about three I really want to take now. I want to take that one too. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's gorgeous. Okay. Okay. Along this back ridge now? Yep. Nice and nice and steady. Right there? Nice and steady. All the way up and down. Nice and slow. Nice see the and crack. slow. Yep. Okay. Yep. I see a crack forming yep. right so through it. We can probably pry it now. Ooh. There is the spiral. That is gorgeous. There's the center. Oh, there's the other piece. So a lot of people are probably thinking like, what the heck, you just destroyed it. On the contrary, this would be extremely easy to put back together. So Dan, this is like a prime example of one that a traditional ammoniter who's backpacking the material out would probably haul off in his hoop. And we know all the pieces are there just yep. because of the way we broke it open. That's right. So now we know now we know that it's all there. We can clearly see that because just because it's in a concretion doesn't mean it's all there. Right. We now know it's all there. We now know it's a plethora serous to a genus of ammonite. So we know that the we know that the museum will give us disposition on it without a problem. And we know it's got good gem. So now what we'll do is we'll apply for disposition on it and then we can actually prep it out. We'll glue it back together. And when we're finished, you won't even know it was broken. When Chris is talking about disposition, every fossil that we pull out of here today, every last little piece, every fragment, we have to take a picture of and send off to the museum, the Royal Terrell Museum. Yes. And they look and evaluate every single piece to make sure there's no pieces that have historic significance that they're interested in. Right. And then once they've gone through everything, they say like piece A, B, C, and D, whatever they want, they say they want them and we have to give them to them. And the pieces that they don't want, they write out a certificate for us and say that we're allowed to keep it and we're allowed to sell it at that point. Sell it, cut it, do whatever we'd like with it. Yeah, from then on, you bet. And that is one of the things that you have to go through when you have one of these legal ammonite mining claims. Chris just said that's probably a $7,000 fossil if it's all prepped out. Oh, and the whole fossil's like that. You have no dead spots. Wow. And the one that Chris is most excited about is this one that rolled out into the water. He says he's going to work this one out of here 
Not today, we're not carrying it out, but he's gonna get this one out whole, just like it is, and prep it whole, because he knows that there's a very expensive fossil inside there. And he has both halves of it. He's got the whole thing, so it will end up being a very, complete very expensive fossil now he has decided he's gonna break it open he doesn't want to he wants to take it out full but unfortunately it's too heavy for him to even get out of the river right now and this river will come up soon and he doesn't want it to be just you know 10 feet underwater and never be able to find it again so he's gonna try to pop the cap off which means we can see it today, but he doesn't like doing this. There's better ways. Oh yeah, and that's not just a red one. Oh, that's There's great. full on color. Blue, green, red, it's a tricolor. $25,000 fossil in his hands right now. There you go, I just saw the crack. Ready? Yeah, baby. Oh, that is bright. Blue, green, red. Wow! Wow! That is something else, and it's huge! 25k, baby! Chris managed to get more of the cap off, so it's probably small enough we can move it now. But just crazy amazing. Amazing color, yeah. And you don't find one of these every day, do you? At this quality? No. No. If I'm out here and I'm, and I'm, good, I'm, I'm solid at it, I probably every couple of years. Yeah. This one's amazing and a beautiful size. Like this has to be 28, 28, 30 inch. Like it's huge. Yeah. This one will be a real treat to finish because there's no dead spot on it. The entire fossil is covered in good quality. Heck yeah. Whoa. Oh. Full on. Oh, it's red green, red green dragon skin. Ooh, that didn't take much. Oh. <laughs> Definitely. Nice. So Chris, how much weight in your backpack? About 80 pounds. <laughs> I think I got about 60 in mine. But that's enough. That's enough of this uh, hike up the hill. I found the hip waders I never ended up wearing. Time for our first break. We're about halfway there. But we haven't started going up yet. Time to start the climb. Well, now we're on the uphill stretch. I'm gonna have to take a lot more breaks. You know, every five minutes, take a break to have a heart attack. We can do it. Mm -hmm. we, we can got, do it. We, we got this, Dan. I think Chris snuck some rocks in my pack while I wasn't looking. It's heavier all of a sudden. Hey, I see the truck. I may live. Sure doesn't look like far down from here. Oh, it felt like a long ways up. Here's the Alberta prairies. So Chris is getting the photos, ready to send it off to the Royal Terrell Museum yep. so that they can make sure that we're not taking anything that they want to know about. And what I like to do is I like to put the lot number with the, with the rock that we collect. So in this case, it's not a big deal because there's only three lots, but now we know. Now we know. That's lot one. That's lot one. And Chris was laughing at me for pulling this piece of crap <laughs> up the hill, but I liked it. I think this is the first piece I saw down the hill that actually showed color oh, in it. But that's what that's what you call a baked one, right? Yeah, that's totally sun baked. Like some people um, are like, "Well, I'll leave it alone. You know, it's Mother Nature." Da 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 da. It's like, well, this is what happens if we don't. That's what Mother Nature does. That's is it? that's about maybe that's probably about a one year of exposure. It goes to skag white. And how do we keep that from happening when we make it into a piece of jewelry? Well, it's stabilized. Stabilized. Right? So we've got to put something a, over top of it to protect I, the UV. Either that, or it's capped, or it's put into a vacuum chamber, and we use a stabilizing agent. Um, it's a special mixture that they use in the industry, and that allows it hardens the ammonite and actually allows us to be able to polish it. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me out here to Alberta. I had so much fun today. I got good sunburn. Found lots of treasures, and of course, if you want some of my treasures, check out my website, link below. I will have some of these for sale, but some of them are going to my personal collection as well. Perfect. So thank you. It was great fun. It's, it was fun. I loved it. It was awesome, Dan. Thank you. And if you'd like to check out Chris, uh, Chris's material at Silver Cove, I'll leave a link in the description for Silver Cove as well. Hope you're all having a great day. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I hope I earned it today. A big thanks to everyone, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Heard Prospecting. Hope you're all having a great day. And until the next one, bye.